This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon and welcome to this live broadcast from South Africa. It is a very, very beautiful afternoon and as you can see, we have a very special animal to show all of you, which is going to be wonderful. Now, it is a warm welcome to the two schools that have joined us this afternoon. So, entries from Virginia, I'm glad that you have joined us this afternoon. I hope that you'll have the most wonderful time as we explore the wilds of Africa. My name is Tristan and on camera I've got Sebastian. There we go, there's Sebastian's hand, so say hello to all of you. And we hope that you're going to have fun, and not only have fun, but ask us lots and lots of questions. And you do that by just asking your teachers, and your teachers will send the questions through to us. Now, I was saying that we have a giraffe, so it's just the one giraffe. It's a little boy giraffe that's sitting over boy because if we look on top of his head you see he's got two things that are sticking up that almost look a little bit like antlers those are not we don't call those antlers they have got a bit of a different name because that's actually bone like your arm or your finger and it's growing off the top of his head and the thing with the male is that it's very thick you can see he's got a thick set and they actually don't have hair on top if it was a female they'd be a little bit thinner with lots and lots of hair that would sprout off the top and that would be how you'd be able to tell a boy from a girl it's very very easy that way giraffe give you a good idea of which one is which Yanni giraffes are tall for the simple reason that they can get food that nobody else can get so being a tall animal out here they means that they reduce competition and so in the wilds of Africa there's a lot of different types of animals and if you have a lot of animals that are all the same height that feed off the leaves of trees then it's going to be very difficult for everyone to find food so a giraffe has now evolved into being a much taller animal that it's able to then get to parts of trees that something like let's say an impala or can't get to and it makes it a much easier way of them finding food so to be nice and tall like that is helps with that it also helps to be able to see predators so being very tall means that they can see quite far over the tops of trees and it's easy for them to spot things like lions and leopards out here in the savannas so it's a good thing to be tall Suntas, giraffes eat leaves, that's what they really like, and they're very, very particular eaters, so they like certain types of things. They always try and find the best possible leaves of nutrition. The problem with that is that those trees generally have lots of thorns on them. Trees that have good tasty leaves have developed thorns to try and protect them, but the giraffe is able to deal with that because he's got a very funny tongue. His tongue is very long. It's over 30 centimeters long, so almost as long as my forearm. And he's able to then to push that out and wrap it around the branches and pull all the little leaflets off. The thing is, though, is that even though he wraps his tongue, it would be cut. I don't know if you've ever put your tongue on something sharp. It gets, might get cut. And so what they've got is they've got little kind of growths. It almost looks like little rubbery growths that lack nerve endings and blood vessels. And so the giraffe can then wrap it around, feed off those leaves, and they don't have to actually worry about being cut or bleeding or being very sore, and they can then actually get to those little leaflets. So they really like small leaves that are protected by thorns. That's their favorite, and they'll go feeding off all kinds of different types of leaves that's what they eat the most sometimes you'll find them eating a fruit um, if once we get into the summer months now we just in the end of our winter it's going to start going into summer and everything's going to start getting a lot more green and we're going to get a lot of fruits growing then you might find them eating some fruits but most of their diet is plant material and right now our giraffe is busy disappearing down into a thicket and so we're going to carry on in the afternoon and see what else we can find in the meantime though let's send you across to my friend david all the way in the masai mara and he's got a wild toothy animal to show all of you hello boys and girls from mountain view school and the tall wood school and welcome to our drive and we are a different country from where you are with my friend Tristan. We're in Kenya, a different country in East Africa, and we're in a game reserve called Maasai Mara or the Mara Triangle. How lucky you saw a giraffe with Tristan, but here animals all together that are called wildebeest, and you can see how they're running, and that tells you they're very fast animals and they always have to run for their lives. There. So very many of them and all those are wildebeest.
Jordan, I'm very happy to hear your question. And why do people go on safari? People will go on safari to Jordan because they will need what we are watching right now. To see the giraffe like what you saw with Tristan, to see the wildebeest like what you are showing you now. And Jordan, before I continue, boys and girls, my name is Ted. The camera with me is a gentleman called Manu. When Manu does that, that means good things gonna happen or good things we shall he shall be showing you on camera. Question, thank you very much. As I turn around, because that's the only one thing I request you boys and girls to do to keep us as as you can. But boys and girls, we got a surprise for you there. Just look in the midst of that grass and tell me what do you see there? Yay! We got lizards from the country come from Kenya. For any one of you who saw the movie Lion King, I'm sure you can remember you saw lots of lions and we call them But also those two are not alone. We got three more to the left. And they're having, I would say, their late lunch because it's about 4.30. East African time but you know lions have to leave and for that reason they have to get some food for themselves now lions are cats lions are cats and because they are cats we call them carnivores and because they are carnivores they eat meat so they have to hunt food for themselves and this particular group of five lions got food for themselves. It was a wildebeest. Can you see how that one is panting or breathing? It is because it's a bit hot now. It's about 81 degrees or 27 degrees Celsius. I do not know what's the temperature back where you are in school. And I'm sure, as Tristan told you, when you give us questions or when you send us comments, you'll do that through your teachers. So through your teachers, boys and girls, let me know at the moment. As I said earlier, here in Kenya, in East Africa, is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees centigrade. So a group of call it a pride. A pride of lions. Yes, I just got that bit. Uh, sorry, Nikki, Michael. What's the question for Michael? Sorry. Michael, you'll notice in Virginia you are in no, you are in America, and where we are now, we are in Kenya, and this part in that is called the Mara Triangle, it is south of the equator. And I'm sure, Michael, you or have shown you the map of the world, and in America, you are in what we call the Northern Hemisphere. So where we are in Kenya, we are. In and for that reason, we have different weather patterns. In Virginia or in America, where you got four different seasons. In Kenya, it's like we basically got just one weather pattern. We have like summer all around the year, but that by two rainfall season, long rains and short rains. So it's the difference between the weather here where you come from so we are now waiting for the short range to come and if Manu is going to show you in the background you can see how they I'm sure boys and girls you can see the clouds of Africa there it means we're expecting some rains to come and there's one particular area we can see some rain so we'll now take you again over to one girl who'd like to say hello to you who is near a water body I am in 
indeed near water and just behind those trees as we find here in Africa an African hardy dar <laughs> sorry I went to say African which is the cousins but <laughs> and you normally see them in water but they're not we call them hardy dars because of the sound they make my name is Taylor and I am and the sun is very bright so I'm going to have to squint at you like this Viem is now shading it with his one hand. How incredible. Filming with one arm. Cool. We'll ask your teachers lots of questions and I look forward to answering them. Shall we look at, oh, look at all the antelope. Have a drink. So not just birds at Buffalo's Hook Dam. So we're also in South Africa, like Tristan, who you met earlier. And this is one of the very few watering holes around here. Now, Chloe and Ella, you've asked why, oh, how do the animals get so hot? Well, some of them will just stand in the shade. They'll come down and drink water, like these impala and water. Waterbuck are the fluffy ones, and the impala are the other kind, the ones that are sort of like a chestnut color. And it will help keep them cool. And some animals like to wallow around in the water, so some animals actually cover themselves with mud or go for a do that rhinos buffaloes hippos warthogs and some animals will pant to keep nice and so there's lots and lots of different ways for them to cool themselves down you see the water back they'll go right into the water and both impala and water back need to drink every single day on a really really hot day sometimes you'll even think look at her she's gulping down that water Now, she doesn't look like she's any crocodiles, but I don't think there are any crocodiles in this watering hole, so she should be okay. Now, Hunter, this is quite a difficult question to answer because there are lots of different types of antelope, as we've just we've seen two of them. We've got the impala and the waterbuck, and not all, well, not all male and female have horns and sometimes it's actually just the boys that have horns like it is with the impala so the impala we're seeing here are all boys the waterbuck that we're seeing are girls so the girl waterbuck don't have any horns but the male and um, waterbuck do so what type of antelope you're looking at they all get different size shaped horns and length of horns the waterbuck horns curve forward they're very much longer than those of the impala and then you get kudu have got spikes get really 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 long to also over th about three feet in length maybe a bit longer than that pens and then there's really small ones like Dacre and Steenbok which are tiny little antelope and they've got very sharp little nothing like the impala has so it kind of just depends and they're not hanging around at the watering hole too they're all going away now Aradia, no, we don't see any of, of South Africa. We don't even see any deer where David is in Kenya. Um, so, yeah, I oh, don't know. I have seen a fellow deer, but um, they don't occur here in South Africa naturally. But they can't. There's some antelope, though, like a bushbuck that looks like a deer. It kind of reminds you of Bambi when you see them. It's like about them. You can see all these boys will probably move off and then they'll go look. There isn't much food around this watering hole anymore. So what you normally see is at this time, just coming out of winter, we're in spring now, uh, all the animals have to travel quite far to find food. Food and grass and trees around watering holes, it's the first to go. It's the first to disappear. He likes to hang around the watering holes. It's a very popular spot. It's like when you try to go to the you know how hard it is unless you get there very early you might not get a nice spot with an umbrella you might else so they're all trying to get here as early as they can you can see they're looking around but there's no lions or leopards or cheetah or hyenas or anything wait because the predators they know that if they hang around water the food will just evade so they need to be quite careful and and have their They'll often stop and listen. They'll look around. They're walking in, in some circles. 
Just trying to see what else there is here. Hmm. What have you got there, Bim? Oh, look at that. It's a bunting. That's a very, very pretty bird. I think it's pink. You get another one that's called a cinnamon breasted bunting. That so stunning, don't you think? Look at that. Madison, there's lots and lots of birds in South Africa, but I think we see about Tory birds, so the birds that should be coming now, they, some of them fly from overseas, from the northern parts of Africa, and they come and visit us because we're going into spring and so there'll be eventually there'll be lots of food for them to eat. See these two birds, lapwing and the three banded plover, just live here all the time, they don't go anywhere. So we can see about now roughly in this area, maybe between 300 and 350 different types of birds. Spot. It's a very big area. Now, it depends on where you go that you'll see different types. Some people like to live on the beach, some like to live in forests, others like to live in deserts. The same thing goes for the birds. They have their favorite places. Now, it seems as though there's lots and lots of animals around today, and what you see very often is the zebra. Well, we don't. You're right, Taylor. So down here in South Africa, we don't see zebras all that much at all. The terrain here is not ideal for them. Zebras like big open spaces. Taimara, where David is, and well, David will see lots and lots of zebras on his side. But here in South Africa, we only see them every now and then, and only in the thousands and thousands, like David does see. But we managed to catch up with a few zebras. There's only three that I can see at the moment. beautiful one over there, and then two just to the left of it and the reason why they like too many of them is because it's really not the right place for zebras zebras know that in areas like this, it's very dangerous for them there's lions out here and, and hyenas and they can run in in these areas in the thickets and the grass and it makes it easy for them to be to be out in a little bit more open where they can see what's going on also they like the open clearings generally have better food than these thickets for Ooh. So Kevin have some sort of camouflage already built in they can't really camouflage, so to speak of the big animals um, things like leopards um, even these zebras to a degree their patterns and their mark there to try and camouflage or to try and blend in with their environment other animals though that uh, small animals that will use camouflage so things like a chameleon a chameleon will change its color blend in better so it uses cells in its body to work out through its vision what color it needs to be to that color so it will go brown or it will be green and those in color then you'll get other animals like some snakes that will have broken patterns and curl up in something where, where there's a bit of leaflet, you know, a bit of kind of grass on the ground, large really, really well. The zebra, even though it looks like it doesn't be bright and, and colorful for us out in this open, like they're not difficult to see, their stripes serve a bit of a different purpose. A zebra is quite easy for us to see. The stripes are there to act, so not so much camouflage, but more to kind of describe and basically what happens with these guys is when they come together and they'll form a tight little bunch and so all of them push together and then those stripes melt into one another and it becomes very difficult zebras together to actually see one from another and normally with predators they will single out a zebra that they want to try and chase and then when they start to chase all of a sudden the zebras all together a little bit and that can sometimes mean the difference for the zebra to get away so even though camouflage that all animals try and use to stay hidden well most animals sometimes is for the patterns and colors that we see on these animals the other thing with zebras you must remember that also don't see in color like we do we are very fortunate to pick up all kinds of different colors when you predator it's kind of a gray muted color and so that blend into the trees and the thickets a little bit thick. And if these zebras had to go maybe another 
yards away from us, we probably would hardly in quite well. So they kind of have a effect to their, their striping pattern, which I mean, camouflage to a degree, but actually to helps them to stay hidden. But there's many animals really excellent camouflage and in fact we can find a female leopard in this area around and we had tracks for probably camouflage is better than any of them they have rosetted coats and it there are a lot of endangered animals unfortunately endangered animals they generally only big ones so people will think of things or wild dogs or those um where you know other animals are out there but i believe that we have a little with our tech so we're going to go on to a we will be back with you fairly shortly so question in just a little bit